Jesus Christ said that they wanted to make Christ their Lord. They didn't want to live by the dictates of their own life anymore. They want to live by how they believe God is calling them to live. These are the people who took time uh, to take our baptism class. Amen. And so they passed our class. And uh, because as a pastor, I want to make sure that everyone that's baptized has an understanding of what it means to be a Christian and what it means to be baptized and I don't know how old you are I don't want you to be the old adage says I don't want you to go down a dry center and come up a wet center I want your life to change I want your very life to change amen and so we have approximately 30 people here this morning who said I want that amen I want my life to change and so these are people who have accepted Jesus Christ and the next process in their Christian walk is to mix it with water. Say mix it with water. See, there are good recipes, but if you ever have a good recipe, at some point in time, they're going to say you need to mix it with some water. So at some point in time, either it's going to be some water, it's going to be a quarter cup, it's going to be half a cup. But if you have good gravy, you're going to have to have some water at some point in time. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here this morning. Say, mix it, mix it with water. The Bible says this, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for being in this place today, oh God. We thank you for the celebration of life today, God. We thank you for the celebration of new life today, oh God. We thank you that as the word of your word hit the hearts of those who are here this morning, that it would add increase to their life today, oh God. We just thank you today for walking with us and talking with us and being with us and comforting us and counseling us today, oh God. It's nobody but you, Father. We thank you today for the surety of your word. We thank you for the faithfulness of your word today, God. We thank you for Christ Jesus who gave his life in our place today, God. He was the sacrifice for us, God. We just thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of your people. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, It says, then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. And John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? 
And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I'm well pleased. I wanted to start this morning because I just wanted to look at the life of Jesus Christ because he began his ministry with water baptism. And the Bible says that he went to John the Baptist seeking uh, John to baptize him, and John tried to stop him. The scripture says he tried to deter him and say that I have need that you baptize me. But Jesus said, nevertheless, for the fulfillment of all righteousness, let me be baptized of you. Baptism is something that you should add to your Christian walk. Amen. And so if you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and you have believed in your heart, you have repented of your sins, then baptism is for you. And so if you haven't been baptized, I want you to start thinking about what will it take for you to be baptized. Because Jesus Christ, this is one of the things I just wanted to quickly say, and we've got to, we have to move on. But Christ came to John to be baptized. If you know anything about scripture, John's baptism was the baptism of repentance, right? There are several baptisms in scripture. Right, and so we're going to be baptized into the body of Christ. Today, uh, we have candidates that are going to be water baptized, and, and we're praying that God will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. But John's baptism was the baptism of repentance. And when Jesus went to John to be baptized, remember, Jesus didn't have anything to be repentant of. He had committed no sin. So when we take a step back, we realize that Jesus was baptized as an example for us, as the fulfillment of righteousness, because he was the one that was going to be the sacrifice for all of us. And this is the pattern that he established, that we would be baptized. And so the scripture says, verse 17, when he was baptized, it says the, the Holy Spirit had descended on him like the form of a dove, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Baptism is for you. And so no matter where you are, if you haven't been baptized, you need to think about mixing your Christianity with some water. That at some point in time, like any good recipe, you need to go down the water and you need to come up out of the water. This morning, I just wanted to share just a couple of things about baptism. Amen? Amen. And so Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, Jesus had uh, died, he had been crucified, he was buried, he had raised on the third day, he rose on the third day, and the last thing he told his disciples before he ascended is to baptize. He started his ministry with baptism. And then he encouraged his disciples as he was leaving. The last thing he told them is to teach all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and make disciples of men. If there's one thing I'm proud of this morning is the fact that I know this morning we are in the will of God, right? To teach all men to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He began with baptism. He ended with baptism. You should begin your Christian walk with baptism. Amen. If baptism was necessary for Jesus, baptism is necessary for us. Baptism is part of this whole new world 
as a Christian. So the water begins to usher you into the life of Christ, the life of the Holy Spirit, the life of blessing, the life of being called a son or a daughter of Christ. Now, now I don't believe that baptism saves you because that's why the Bible says that if we would believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, we would be saved. But baptism shows a sign that I am a Christian, that I now identify with Christ. So baptism doesn't save you, but it's part of your Christian walk. Is this making sense? And so I don't believe that if you are not baptized, you can't be saved. Because you can be saved without baptism, but if you have the opportunity to be baptized, you should be. Amen. So but the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we know that our dead to sin live any longer therein? So Paul asked a question in Romans chapter 6 verse 1. He says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Then he said, God forbid. He says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? He asked a question, and then he gave them the answer, and he took them all the way back to baptism. Because the Bible says in verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Amen. Baptism, actually, in the Greek language, comes from the word baptizo, which means to dip, it means to sink, it means to submerge or to immerse, it means to dip under. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance says it means to wash or to make fully wet. Say, make fully wet. I remember baptizing someone, and, and um, um, their color was like mine. And they had this issue like, Pastor, are you going to get my hair wet? And I'm like, yeah, you're going down. You're going all the way down. You are going under the water. There will be no sprinkling today. You, you are submerging. The reason we do that is because that's what the word actually means, right? So, so if you're getting baptized today, just go ahead and call your stylist and have her get you later on this evening or Monday morning. But you are going down. Make sure you have all your bobby pins in because you are going under the water. Say submerge. Sub submerge means under, right? That's why you talk, you talk about a submarine that's, that's under. And so you will be immersed, but your life will change. Amen. There's something about identifying with the burial of Christ. And so my first point this morning is just simply past. Say past. Because everybody has a past. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So, so, so whether you smoked, whether you cracked out, whether you were living with people that you shouldn't have been living, whether you were gangbanging, whatever your situation was, everybody has a past. And so the power of baptism is that you are now saying, I am forsaking my past. And so the same way that Christ died, we die with him. So that means our past is now covered in the blood of Christ. And so actually the baptism is, is more of a watery tomb because at one point you're going to come out of it and you're going to come out different than when you went in because it, baptism helps to take care of the past. Amen. It's like, well, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. Have you accepted Christ? Have you been baptized? Then it should not matter what you have done. Just because men and women keep remembering what you have done does not mean that Christ remembers what you have done. The scripture says that he has separated our sin as far as the east is from the west, and he does not remember them anymore. Actually, a better translation is he chooses not to remember them anymore. Who would not serve a Jesus like this? Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. So we have been baptized into his death. The principle of baptism is just as Christ died, we die. Matter of fact, the apostle Paul said he died daily. Christ died, he's our example. 
not only in getting baptized, but he's also our example of the sacrificial lamb of God, that because he died, we don't have to die physically for our sins. If I'm still in sin. So it took someone who was outside of sin to lay down his life for us. That's why we welcome the opportunity to say, I'm dying with you because I don't have to die. I just accept what you have done on my behalf. Somebody say amen in here this morning. So Jesus died for us. He was a sacrifice for the sins that were committed by Adam that affected all of mankind. You were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, through no fault of your own. When you got here, sin was already here. When you were first born, sin was already here. That's why you need to be born again. Amen. Being baptized into his death is not a bad thing. Especially when you think and understand that because he died, I don't have to. Amen. The Bible says that we have been baptized into his death. And death means thanatos, which means separation, either physical or spiritual. And so Christ died, which means he was separated. Does that make sense? Remember, he was the one on the cross saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me. First time in scripture that he just called God, God and not father, because there was a separation that had taken place that when he began to uh, be the sin for all of mankind, there was a separation that took place. Amen. But because he was separated, he was the corridor for us not to be separated. This is important. Amen. We have been separated from the sin of Adam, and so we were separated from following our own desires, our appetites, our path. So when you get baptized and you come out of the water, you confess Jesus Christ, there is a separation that goes on because you should be different. You should be different. Not perfect, but you should be different like well I don't know no 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 if you have repented and you have believed and you have confessed and you have gotten baptized you should be different when we're baptized into his death we accept Christ we are now attached to Christ because when we accept what God did for him as the sin of the world, when we identify with that, we accept what God has done on our behalf, which then means we are attached to him. Amen. Death closes out one period of your life and opens up another period Amen. of your life. Amen. When people die in the natural, they are separated. Right? They're separated from their body, and now they are no longer here, but they're in heaven because death causes separation. When you accept Christ, you should be separated from your sin. Oh, I better, I better go on. I better go on. When we're baptized into Christ, we're baptized into his death. When you go down into the water, you are baptized into his death. That's why Paul opened in Romans chapter 6 verse 3 saying, know ye not. He's like, you got to know this. You got to know this. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, no, no, no. You got to know this, that when he died and you are attached to him, that means you died. That means you don't cuss no more. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That means you don't smoke weed no more. I know it's for medicinal purposes. I know you got your card. You got, I, so, 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 so that means you don't talk crazy to people anymore. There has to be a, a change. There, there has to be a change. That means you don't go to the club. You don't, you don't go to the club. There has to be some type of change. 
we ought to see you coming to assemble yourself now with, with the body of Christ because we are now have, all have been baptized into his body now. Amen. Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 says, For as many of you that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When you go down in the water, you are putting on Christ. So, so that was your past. So now let's talk about your present because the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 3, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Verse 4 says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in this newness of life. Newness, newness in the Greek comes from the word kenotos, which means newness, freshness, novelty, which comes from the root word kenos, which means fresh, unused, fresh in development or opportunity, not found exactly like this before. That when you come out of the water, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm fresh now. I'm, 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 I'm fresh. This is the new me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. The, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, so I, now I have the ability to walk in this newness of life. Say newness of life. That, that's why I don't do the old things that I used to do. Because now I'm walking into this brand new world. You, you thought it was just Aladdin that wanted to take you into a brand new world. No, Jesus wants to take you into this brand new world. A whole new world. A new point of view. A way of thinking differently. A new world of acting differently. A new world of new family and relationships. and A new way of putting things back together that was broken. A new world of placing other people ahead of yourself. Somebody say amen to that. A new world of serving better. A new world of loving and transforming your life. This is a brand new world. I love being a Christian. It's a new world. I love this walk with God. It's a new world. I love, love knowing that my past has been forgiven and hidden in Christ, that my present is courageous and full of commitment for him because he's taken care of my past and now for my present, he's given me a new way of living, a new way of thinking. Things look different to me now. I don't see people the way I used to see them now. God has given me a heart of compassion. He's given me eyes to see deeper than how people are acting because now I live and I walk differently. It's new. I'm a novelty even to myself. I never thought I could act this way and behave this way before. Some people said I thought I would cuss all my life. I thought I would be agitated, irritated, upset all of my life. I never thought that I could be at this level. And God says, you can. I paid the price for you. I'm glad that I live the way that I live. I was just talking to my wife the other day because we were outside walking. I'm like, God called us to Oklahoma. I'm like, I'm glad to live in the great state. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm not hoping and praying like God move me to Dallas, move me to Kansas City, move me back to California. Move. No, no, if this is where God called me, then I got this newness of life that even Oklahoma looks good. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm going to go down with my lawn chair to scissor tail and still have a good time in the Lord because this is new to me. Is this making sense to anybody? Your life should be new. Because baptism is a public declaration of your love for Christ. It's new. Say it's new. It should be new. You know, I remember when 
Tarsha and I got married, and we stood in front of the preacher who actually was my dad because he married us. And we exchanged rings. And I just took my ring off. It says uh, 10 carat, so you wouldn't want it because it says not 24 carat. It's, it's, but that's all we could afford. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I think we got this at what, J.C. Penney's or what? It was like $200. I'm like, I was married? I'm like, sure, Gabriel. I'm like, I was married. Now. See, you won't go to too many churches, and they'll, they'll have, a, I alluded to Suge Avery, I alluded to Aladdin, but, but anyway, you got to move on. But this is not what makes me married. This is the identification that I am married. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I know people who wear this, and they don't act like, they're married. I know people that in certain circles, before they go in, they take it off because they don't want people to know that they're married. So, but for anyone who ever thought about, like, Pastor Randy, I'm, I got to let you know, like, I was married. I was, I was, I was married. Because this is the public identification and declaration that I'm married. Because I want everybody to know that, that I'm spoken for. So when you are baptized, it's an identification ceremony. It's, it's a declaration that I want everybody to know that I now belong to him. So, so when you come into my office at work, you, you're going to see my Bible laid out or you're going to see some, some devotional cards or, or you'll see some ministries that I give to and, and they give me like little devotions and things. When you come into my office, somebody's going to know that I have made a decision to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And, and I'm not ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. And so this right here gives me power. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Like, hey, what's your name? Padow. Because if you can't help yourself, he'll help you. But this is still not what makes me married. Because married is inward. That when I said I love her for better, for worse, rich, for poor, sickness, and health, forsaking all others for her, it started here before it, it ended up here. Is this making sense? Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here this morning. And that's why, no matter what she does, I'm like, we're still married. You can get mad. You can go sleep in the other room. I'm coming in the other room, too. I'm coming in the other room, too. You can get mad and say you want to go on the walk. I'm like, I'm just going to follow you when you walk around. I'm going to just... Because you, you can't get rid of me because we are stuck like glue because it's not out there. It's, it's, it's in here. Do you know a marriage license don't mean you're really married? I've seen people with a marriage license that didn't act like they were married. Marriage comes from the inside. And when it gets to the inside, then you say, I want to make a public declaration. I want to invite all my family. I want to invite all of my friends. I want to invite everybody to celebrate this day with me because I'm getting ready to make a public declaration of who, who I'm forsaking everybody else for. That there's nobody like her. Some wife should say, there's nobody like him, even though he makes me mad. I told him last week to take out the trash. The trash is still in the, and he's like, I'm getting to it. I better leave that alone. I better. Are there any husbands in here you never move as fast as your wife wants you to, to move? Y'all don't, don't, don't put your hand down because she's going to be nudging you. She's, I'm just saying, I feel you. I feel you. The Bible says in, in verse 4, 
Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Life comes from the Greek word Z-O-E, Zoe life. It's the God kind of life. That God has new life for you. He wants to exchange the old and give you the new life. Amen. He, he wants to put the proverbial ring on your finger like you belong to me. Amen. How many know that it's good to be a son and a daughter of God? Amen. Not just God's creation, but I have taken the next step where now he calls me son. I call him father. He has parental rights over me. When I was baptized, I baptized the old, and now I'm walking in the present, the newness of life, and I'm saying, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. I'm open to it. And I don't mind telling people, well, this is what's going on in my life. Have you tried Jesus? This, this is what's happening in the life of my kids. Have you tried Jesus? This is what's going on on my job. Have you tried Jesus? This is what's happening to me in high school, Pastor Randy. Have you tried Jesus? Because he's all, he's all right. He's all right. Say past. Say present. Say future. Baptism is just not for your past. It's not just for your present. Baptism is for your future. The Bible says, verse 5, it says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also or be also in the likeness of of his resurrection right so we're baptized into his death we have newness of life and now we have likeness of his resurrection that one day we'll be caught up to meet him amen so 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 if we carry out the whole symbolism of back, back baptism we guard we go down we're buried with christ we come up in newness of life but it doesn't stop there one day we have a hope that we will see him again. Because that was, the, that was his whole process of death, burial, and resurrection that symbolized to us in baptism that we die, now we are raised, and we'll be raised again. You're like, well, I, I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in hell. It's going to be difficult. I remember talking to a friend of mine, and this has been years ago, and he told me that he was agnostic, right? So he wasn't atheist. Atheist, I don't believe in God. He said he was agnostic. I believe that there is something out there. And I said, it's, you know, bro, I love you. But it's going to be too late to say, like, I was wrong after you've died. Is this making sense? Say resurrection. The Bible says this, for we have been planted, say planted together. Planted comes from, this will be the last Greek word I give you, sumphatos. It means united with, it means grown together, and it means congenital. And when I first saw that last word, I thought, okay, this isn't, this isn't making sense to me. So, so let me explore this a little bit more because, I mean, what does congenital have to do with being planted together? Is this making sense? <laughs> because the scripture says we have been planted together with Christ. We've died with him in baptism. We walk with him in newness of life. And then Paul said that we have been planted together, meaning we have been conjoined with God. Amen. This is what I didn't know. With regard to identical twins, identical twins occur when a single fertilized egg splits and develops into two individuals. If you know twins, that's why they, they look alike. It's the same egg, but it has been split 
into two. Is that making sense? But conjoined twins occur when the embryo partially splits. Conjoined. I don't know if you've ever seen conjoined babies. Maybe they're conjoined at the hip. Maybe they're conjoined at the abdomen. Maybe they're conjoined by the back. And, and the doctor then has to go in and separate them. That's why planted means congenital. Because we're not just close to Christ. We have been conjoined to Christ. So, so when the new seed of Jesus Christ is planted in your heart, it's just not that God allows you to grow by yourself because he's right there with you you. He's attached to you. He's attached to your heart. He's attached to your soul. He's attached to your mind. And as he grows in you, you continue to grow. So all of his branches begin to grow through your branches and all of his limbs begin to grow through your limbs and his eyes become your eyes and his ears become your ears and his hands become your hands because you're growing together. Is this making sense that, that we have been planted with him and now we have grown together with him. He's not growing apart from us. We're not growing apart from him. We are attached. I'm attached. I'm attached. The scripture says this, that we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, that, that, that where he goes, I go, and where he is, I am, and I don't go anywhere that he's not there, and, and my growth and development is based on him living in me. That I just need a little bit more water. If I can get a little bit more water, then I can grow a little bit more. And Christ is saying, I'm right there with you. If he said, let the wheat and tares grow together and he separates, surely if we're planted together with him, then we can grow together with him. See, Christianity is not perfection. Christianity is growing and learning and developing every day in every way. Oh, my God. That's why the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, this is what the Apostle Paul said. He said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. We've been planted with him and, and the seed of Christ is now in our spirit, but he still has to be formed and developed in us. God wants to live his life through you. Uh-oh. He, he wants to speak through you. He wants to heal through you. He wants to speak an encouraging word through you. This summer, we had a sermon series about growing and developing, and God help me, I, I, I want to grow. God wants you to grow. Amen. Baptism is a part of that process. Amen. So you take your past, you take your guilt, you take your shame, you take your disobedience, you take the power of the enemy, you take your defeat, and it's buried. God gives you newness of life. He wants to water you so that you can grow. Amen? Amen? The Bible says this in verse 5. It says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Our life just doesn't stop here on earth. Uh-oh. And this will begin to make more and more sense to you and it'll become more and more important to you the older that you get. When I read this at 25, it didn't make as much sense to me as it does now. When you look over the horizon and it seems like the sun is setting, that you may have lived more years than what you have left. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. That, that there will be a day that you won't be here. 
But our hope is in Christ Jesus. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That before it's over, as a Christian, you will see me again. So, so you'll see your mother again, and you'll see your father again, and you'll see your grandparents again, and you'll see your great-great-grandparents again. If they were Christians, they've accepted Christ, you will see them again. That's the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. We'll stand. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But he noticed it wasn't himself. He said, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. In the NIV, it reads this way. I have been crucified, or in the Amplified, I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to and relying on and completely trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. The great apostle Paul realized that he didn't live to himself anymore. There was greater purpose. From the time of his conversion, he was sold out for Christ. From the time of your conversion and your baptism, I want you to be sold out for Christ. Sold out for him. Hey, we want to thank you for watching our broadcast today. We hope that something was said that would give you encouragement, something that will help you strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Our goal is to cover the entire earth with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this message has been a blessing to you, just let us know. Leave us a comment in the line. Give us a thumbs up. And so until the next time, God bless you.